CQ, 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 calling the Southwest Florida TechNet. CQ, 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 calling the Southwest Florida TechNet. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. This is the Southwest Florida TechNet for this uh, 22nd day of January, 2021. This is Kilo Oscar 4, Echo Foxtrot Sierra, KO4EFS. My name is Ian, and I will be the net control station for this evening. <clears throat> The Southwest Florida Tech Net is a board approved net of the Southwest of the Fort Myers Amateur Radio Club. More information about the net and the club can be found at www.swfltech.net. That's www.swfltech.net. And more club information can be found at fmarc.net. That's fmarc.net. This net meets weekly on the 146.685 repeater for the purpose of discussing the technology and systems involved in amateur radio and to assist amateur radio operators to build and maintain radio systems and stations. In the event of a repeater failure, please switch to the 147.165 repeater. That's channel one on your Aries standard frequency list. This is a directed net, so please follow the instructions of net control. Is there any emergencies or priority traffic at this time? Hearing nothing, if you have an emergency at any time during the net, please do a double break and say emergency and we will help you in any way that we can. The net has a companion website for the passing of photos, links and text and also a Zoom meeting that's going on right now and the people in that Zoom meeting are listening to this radio. The website has lots of helpful information that will help uh, that and have information offered for tonight's web. You can check in online. You can also, there's a page there called the uh, Live Net page where you can go and actually share links uh, and uh, share information with the other people that are on tonight. There's also a file share page. And as I said, a Zoom meeting. So everything is provided there for you tonight to, uh, to uh, learn as much as you can about our topic tonight break to join the zoom meeting go to www.swfltech.net that's www.swfltech.net and click the zoom uh, button there's one at the top on the right and there's one just a little ways down on the left you'll see them just click one of those and it will start a zoom meeting and you'll be all set to go from there we buy some time I know you're not supposed to say break, and I keep saying that. I'm trying to break myself of that. No pun intended. Okay, we'll now take check-ins to the Southwest Florida TechNet. Uh, we encourage everyone to check in online by using the check-in tab under the live tab. Just go to live tab, and underneath there you'll see check-in, and you can just put your name and call sign in there so we know who's in the meeting tonight. Anyone who's not able to join us in the, in the Zoom meeting tonight can check in now on the radio. We're taking check-ins now to the Southwest Florida Tech Net. Check-ins, come now. This is K4RAB, Kilo 4 Romeo Alpha Bravo, me mobile. K4RAB mobile. K4RAB, Romeo Alpha Bravo. All right, I got you checked in. Kilo 4, Romeo Alpha Bravo. Any other check-ins, mobile or short time? Kilo Sierra 4, Yankee Papa, Steve in Sarasota. Please. All right, give me the call sign one more time. A kilowatt, Sierra 4, Yankee Papa. KS4YP in Sarasota. I got you checked in. Anybody else want to check in tonight? All right, very good, guys. Be safe out there on the roads, and thanks for checking in tonight. I'll get you guys on the login sheet, and hopefully if uh, you get to your destination later, you can join us in the Zoom meeting. Tonight's topic is going to be Winter Field Day. My guest host tonight is John AA4JS. Alpha Alpha 4, Juliet Sierra, 
and uh, his the website. Uh, we have more information about Winter Field Day on the FMARC website and the email address to get more information or to volunteer is winterfieldday at fmarc.net. That's winterfieldday at fmarc.net. Buy some time. Is there any additional traffic before we close the radio portion of the TechNet tonight? Come now. All right, thank you everybody for participating in the radio portion of the Southwest Florida TechNet. Uh, this is a board approved net of the Fort Myers Amateur Radio Club. And we're now gonna be switching to the Zoom meeting at this time. So if anybody out there is listening on the radio, please meet us on the Zoom meeting, either using your, uh, your handheld device, your tablet, your laptop, your desk computer, however you gotta get to us. Uh, join us on the Zoom meeting, go to swfltech.net that's swfltech.net, and we'll meet you in the Zoom meeting. I'm now going to close this net and return this net to the uh, repeater to normal amateur use. This is Kilo Oscar 4 Echo Foxtrot Sierra KO4 EFS. Clear and switching to Zoom. All right. Now I'm just going to turn the radio off. There we go. And now it's just us. <laughs> all right, guys. How's that? Everybody hear me all right? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm admitting all. And they keep popping up here, and I keep admitting. And I know I'm, I'm not doing it as quickly as I would like to do it. Um, but I'm trying to uh, admit people as they come in here. I'm trying to see if Tom is in. Uh, I did not see him on the list yet. Okay. Um, man, there's, there's a lot of people coming in. All right. What I'm going uh, to do just to save time here is uh, I've made uh, W9GPI. I've made you a co-host. If you can just help me keep an eye on uh, admitting people, I would appreciate it. And uh, we'll just go from there. I can do that. All right, and there we go. And I'm gonna make John a co-host. All right, and if I see Tom, I'll make him one too. And just admit people in. If anybody becomes a problem, we'll just kick them back out. It's no big deal. All right, so there we go. Everybody welcome into the Southwest Florida TechNet Zoom meeting tonight. Tonight, uh, my co-host is John AA4JS. I don't think uh, too many introductions are probably necessary. I think everybody knows John. Uh, John's been doing the... Uh, winter field day for a few years. How, how many years you've been coordinating it, John? This is year number three. Third year. Okay. And um, tonight what we're going to do is we're going to take a deep dive into winter field day because we want to, uh, we want to make it a great winter field day this year. The weather should be good. We're kind of coming out of this really cold cycle. So I think hopefully by next week, I really don't think it's going to be bitter cold out there. I think, I think it's going to be pretty good looking at some of the long range forecasting. Um, and winter field day, I, I think w the first thing I just wanted to talk about here, and then I'm going to, I'm going to immediately turn it over to John and we're going to turn a slideshow on here for you guys to see, uh, from the last two years. But I just want to start out by saying I'm somebody that does not compete. I don't compete. I don't like competing. So they race me to the end of the driveway. I just let them go. Cause I don't, I don't compete. I don't watch sports. I don't do any kind of competition. I love competing in ham radio and i'd love it because there's just large pools of people you know where they're going to be you know what they're doing you can go there they're there you can make the contacts they want to contact you as bad as you want to contact them and i find contests to be an amazing way to test and hone my skills without ever thinking about winning okay it's it's not a win it's it's a win when you go out and you do it uh, so anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way right up front. And if there's people out there that say, well, I'm here tonight, I'm going to hang out because I like the tech net, but I'm really just not in the contesting. I get it. I wasn't either until I did the first one. And I got kind of hooked because uh, of just the, the, the richness of the amount of people that were there. And, and the contacts are easy because everybody knows exactly what to say. And it gave me a lot of really good mic time and everything else. So I just wanted to put that out there. 
um, even if you're not in the contesting at all uh, or into contests at all or into winning at all, um, this is just a great amateur radio practice drill function, whatever you want to call it. Um, SET, I mean, you can call it whatever you want. We're going to go out there. We're going to set up with our batteries and our generators and we're going to set up our portable stuff. So I just, I think it's an amazing thing. All right. Um, what we're going to do, I'm going to turn this over to John. John's going to tell us about uh, winter field day. If you guys, uh, at the, by the end of the thing, if you want to volunteer, uh, it's winter field day at fmarc.com. Just uh, shoot John an email, let him know when you're going to be out. Dot net. We'll, uh, dot net. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, winter field day at fmarc.net. I know the dot com will get you there, but I don't think it works with the emails. So yes, you're right. Dot net. All right. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead, John, and turn it over to you. And, uh, and then we'll just work our way through this as we go. If anybody has any questions, as always, just oh, say wow. something. Okay. Um, just say something. Now, what we're going to do is um, I'm actually going to uh, uh, play this. Uh, I'm going to put this on full screen. Yeah. And, um, and we're going to go from here. And this, this is um, the, the pictures from last year's, uh, the last two years of yeah. field day. So, Sounds all right, like John, I'll turn it over to you. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Ian. And yeah, I think most of you know me by now. I'm John Scarborough, AA Ford JS, and uh, I'm the Winter Field Day Chairman. And uh, you know, the Christians have Christmas, and uh, Hebrew people have Rosh Hashanah. And pagans have Halloween. Ham radio operators have Field Day, and that's our holiday. Uh, for almost ninety years. Ham radio operators have been holding field days um, in June. I'm on a uh... a lot of hams treat it as a holiday like event. It's it, it's really kind of it's supposed to be a technical net. It's a Zoom meeting. To to many of us, it is a uh, a holiday. A little history about Winter Field Day. The concept uh, came up in. Uh, the the mid 2000 I, I think 2006 2007 something like that and uh, some operators up in uh, Pennsylvania initially decided you know we do field day in the summer and it's beautiful there in the summer so they decided they wanted to introduce some more challenges because uh, we all know that in uh, some of the situations that ham radio operators volunteer to help out in it's not always ideal conditions. So they came up with this idea and uh, they were all older hams and they kind of uh, either fell away or kind of died off and, and winter field day kind of fizzled and, and almost went away. But a, a group formed to pick it up and, and take it over and resurrect it called the Winter Field Day Association. They started in, uh, I think, 2016 they uh, started actually doing the scores and, and uh, compiling it all. Anyway, uh, in 2017, I was at a board meeting at FMARC and, uh, you know, I had, I had heard bits and pieces about Winter Field Day. I'd worked a few stations on Winter Field Day and uh, honestly, I had to Google it to find out what the heck it was. Uh, but anyway, we got to talking at it at the board about it at the board meeting, and uh, and some had heard of, about it, and some hadn't, and uh, you know everybody seemed interested, and but it was pretty close to the date at this point, and so they decided, well, you know, we don't want to try to put that together, throw it together for this year, but yeah, we'd like to do it, and 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 kind of left it at that. Well, our FMARC president at the time, Bob Piccarelli, looked at me and said, well, the chairman, make it happen next year. And <laughs> so, you know, be careful what you volunteer for. So we did our first winter field day in uh, January of 2019. And uh, like this, very much like the field day in June, we set up at the North Fort Myers Community Park uh, set antennas up in the football and soccer fields, uh, set up under the pavilion, as you can see in the pictures. A uh, lot of room to set up antennas. This year, we're going to try to optimize that. In past, we've had 
and we've had things too close in and, and we've had some interference issues and, and we're working, we've got some more, uh, some more filters, bandpass filters that we hadn't been using. And we're going to have them out and, and try to do a little better job of mitigating interference. And uh, that way we can get more points. Uh, you know, and, and they do score this thing, like the ARL summer field day or June field day. There is scoring. Uh, you know, it's not a contest, uh, but that you do score and, and, you know, you get some bragging rights and things like that. Uh, Voice contacts are a point of piece. Digital contacts are uh, two points, that being PSK31. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, Feldhell, uh, RTTY, those type of digital contacts. Anything that sends data as opposed to voice. Uh, CW contacts are two points each. And so that's kind of a good way to, you know, do lots of digital, lots of CW to get uh, some extra points. Uh, generally, we have, let's see, the first year we had two CW operators. Last year, we only had one. Uh, but uh, that all, always helps. We've got a couple of, uh, we've got one CW operator this year, a couple of uh, uh, digital operators and uh, then several phone operators. You know, I enjoy doing digital, but phone is really my first love and that's what I enjoy doing. And that's probably what I'll, uh, what I'll be doing. There are multipliers and, and Ian wanted me to hit on this a little bit and it's a good thing to talk about a little bit. There are multipliers. So the more bands and the more modes you work, the higher your multipliers are. Uh, you get a multiplier for each mode and each band. And, and John, uh, I just, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, John, but I've actually been working on this. Oh, cool. Uh, you can see it there. Uh, this is something I kind of been working on, like a checkoff sheet for all the multipliers. Look at all the multipliers there are. Yeah. And by the way, I stop at 70 centimeters. There's five or six bands above that. Some of which I don't even know if I've ever heard of before. <laughs> Uh, there's, there's some, there's some stuff up there that would cook chicken, uh, th that, uh, is on the list too. So, um, but anyway, I just put the stuff that we're more likely to use, but we can go higher than this, uh, 30 but, centimeters, 23 centimeters. Yeah, essentially for but, every one of those circles on there, that's a multiplier that we could get, which means our total number of QSO points would be multiplied by whatever, however many of those circles are checked. So in other words, hey, let's say you work all day long, you work on 40 meters. That's all we do is 40 meters all day long. And then one guy goes up and makes one phone contact on 160. Everything we did all day gets multiplied by two. Yep, that's pretty much the way it works. Is that crazy? Yeah. I mean, you can win right here just by filling these circles uh, up. Let me tell you, that's, that's a not that winning deal. matters, but, you know. Some other things about scoring, uh, we get 1,500 points of bonus. Uh, oh, there, you've got it all there. Cool. Uh, <laughs> 1,500 points for generator, 1,500 points for outdoor operation, uh, 1,500 points since we're set up someplace that's not a usual station, i.e. not at home, and... 1,500 bonus points for making a QSO by, by satellite. Uh, and Brian has been there both years. He's made R1 satellite contact both years. They tell you only one. They don't give you any additional points for any more than one because they don't want some people hogging up you know, what little bit of satellite time there is available. So as long as you make one, you get the bonus. And... Uh, so we should get all four of those bonuses. Yeah. We've got, as long as we can make that satellite. Yeah. Contact. Both years that we've done it, we have gotten all four of those bonuses. So we've gotten the 6,000 bonus points both years. Uh, you know, by the time you do all the multipliers and do it all in the right order, it takes a friggin' Excel spreadsheet to total the points 
for the thing. It's, <laughs> it's really a project, and uh, but I've got it down to a science now because the first year I developed me a, a spreadsheet thing and I plug the numbers in and do the math and uh, come up with a total and that's what I send off. In 2019, we did a total of 451 contacts and submitted for 16,960 points. Our multiplier that year was eight. Uh, in 2020, we got uh, 476 contacts, so uh, 25 more, but we had a multiplier of nine. So that made a big difference. So we submitted 20,544 points. Uh, so that's kind of how the scoring goes. Uh, any questions, Ian? No, I don't have anything. Does anybody have any questions for John so far on the scoring portion? All right, let me let these, there's more people showing up. Uh, so anyway, all right, so let's get, uh, let's go past that and uh, let's talk about the, uh, the different uh, bands and different antennas and different things we're gonna be working. Um, to start with, I know, um, when you when you're doing this, you can actually have uh, your we have a, a number that we have to give every time we check in for the number of stations that we're operating. Now, John, correct me if I'm wrong, but I read on this that it's the number of simultaneous operating stations, not the number of radios and not the number of people. It's simply the number of simultaneously transmitting stations. So in other words, if you and I each have, let's say we each have a radio there doing two different things, as long as only one of us was working at one time, that would be fine. That still only counts as one. In other words, uh, I, the example they gave was uh, two people working seven radios counts as two, not seven. Right. So uh, it sounds to me like, you know, our number is going to be what, around six or seven Probably. simultaneous stations? Seven, the way it's looking right now, but that's something that you know we can never determine until actually the day off. Right. But what I'm also getting at is, if someone wanted to operate or, or do something else um, with their own station or with their own thing or something, I'm not saying that we're ruling that out because it doesn't matter how many radios and it doesn't matter how many people. In other words, when I first started this, John, what I thought was if I sit down and key the mic i'm now gonna they're now gonna divide the score by me too because it's another operator but it doesn't work that way so you can have oh, 50 right. operators on one radio you know what i'm saying and that's one right that's so, a number one so and our first year we operated as a five last year we operated as a seven seven so and if we're a seven way, go ahead that, by the way, is part of the exchange. Right. Uh, the near field day exchange is your class, which is the number and the type of station. The three types of station are outdoor, indoor, and home. And the difference between indoors and home is if you've set up someplace that you don't normally operate, but it's indoors. So you've got heating insulation, running water bathrooms and all that. Uh, for instance, some of these guys will boondock in an RV and operate it out of their RV. Of course, the RV's got insulation, it's got a furnace, the whole thing. So that's not considered outdoors, that's still considered indoor. So, so the three classes are indoor, outdoor, and home. So part of our exchange would be uh, 7F, or, or 7O rather, 7 Oscar, right. O for outdoors. So as long as we don't ever have more than seven radios operating at the same time, we can pretty much do whatever we want. So that Within was pretty cool. Of course, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So anyway, I, I because John, I'm going to be honest. I I'm gonna I'm gonna be your backup. I'm gonna help you because I want to work some phone. 
Um, but I'm also interested in getting some of these multipliers. Mm -hmm. I want to work with whoever's there and bring a few things myself and see if I can get some of these multipliers. I think that would be fun. Yeah, I, I plan to work the multipliers a little more than I have in the past and, and try, to, uh, try to run up the ticket, so to speak, with the multipliers because that's, that's the way you get the points. But, you know, once again, it's not really a contest. It's not about points. It, it's about getting up, checking out your equipment. You know, there have been some years that we've had guys show up and, oh, no, this doesn't work. We've got to troubleshoot it. And that's part of what field, Winter Field Day is for, and, and all field days are for, is to make sure you can work on the fly, uh, troubleshoot your equipment if you need to, uh, you know, help each other out. And uh, there are just so many other points to field day besides just making a lot of points. I hear the food ain't bad. Although all the pictures, all the boxes the food came in were from Chewy. That was the only question I had about <laughs> last year's food. Uh, all these pictures, all the food sitting there stacked on top of Chewy boxes. For those of you who don't know, Chewy is the number one deliverer of pet food. So I just... Uh, I, careful, I careful. I'll come and cough COVID all over all of your food down here if you guys ain't careful. I'll go find some. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm wondering. Don't worry, uh, I've got the menu I, fully squared away. Okay. Well, I hope we did better than dog chow this year. <laughs> you did a lot better than dog chow last year. It was the previous year that was the problem. Ian and I had a lot of fun with that last year. You know, this guy used the nicest box that he had to carry, you know, the right size and everything, and a good sturdy box. I figured that's what it was. To carry in the question, stuff you know that he, he was bringing. And I saw that chewy box and I just had to chuckle. So that went in, uh, of course, I had to get several pictures of that. And that even went in my slideshow that I uh, did <laughs> post field day. Uh, hey, it, it kept, got, it kept the pulled pork from sloshing around and the baked beans stayed in the tray for Saturday night dinner. So everybody was happy. There were, there were no leftovers last year, by the way. Indeed. Uh, and I, I will tell you up front, and not just because he's on here, but I'll tell you, Leo did an awesome job last year as our cook, and he was the first guy when I, I thought of when uh, I started trying to figure out who I'd get to, to provide food. Uh, well, as, as I told you last year, you guys are easy to cook for. You guys are all sober and don't have loaded guns. I'm used to cooking for my own. I'm used to cook, cooking for my hunting club with a bunch of drunk guys with shotguns, so you guys are simple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, you did a great job, Leo. And, uh, hey, and I, I absolutely, I absolutely enjoyed it. I look forward to it. And I've been planning on doing it now for a couple of months, ever since we moved into the new house. I can't wait to get back down there for a couple of weeks. All right. Hopefully so you're anything staying longer else? in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll probably be down about five or six weeks this time. I mean, normally we come down beginning in November and go home mid March. Cause I have a, a, 200 seat dinner that I cook for, for the hunting club at the VFW. Um, but this year, because we moved in on election day, believe it or not, <laughs> had the moving truck here on election day. Um, and we're still, still unpacking boxes two months later. So yeah, it's been a, it's been kind of a sideways show up here. Well, we'll be glad to have you, Leo. Be glad yeah, to get I back. Hear that the food's it, good. It, I, the, the, just for you guys that don't know, I mean, they, they set up a whole outdoor kitchen there and they cook gourmet meals. So it's, uh, it's amazing. They're not all from Chewy. <laughs> so anyway. Woof, woof, woof. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Uh, I just thought that was so That picture will come around again. There's two or three different pictures with all the Chewy boxes there. Yeah, it's pretty um, comical. Yeah. And there's a, that, that was some, a shot there of the, uh, um, reporting software anything else on the food or any of that kind of stuff if not yeah food. as i mentioned during the early check-in portion uh, for those that are going to be operating overnight i am planning on doing at least one tray of ziti uh some garlic bread garlic toast and a uh, you know just a, a garden salad that uh, i'll plug into a, a hot water bath uh to keep the, the ziti warm overnight so those that are operating overnight can have some some warm food it can get a little chilly down there overnight 
John, this is KJ4 Whiskey Papa Baker. I have a question. Yeah, Robert. My question. Do you all of a sudden, all of a sudden you got quiet? Yeah, he, he went muted. Hit the mute button by accident. No, I'm okay. Hold on. We're hearing you now. Are you hearing me now? Yes. Okay. The question is, if you're operating from home, do you get counted in that same group of stations that are outdoors at the rec center? No. If you operate from home, use your own call sign. And so, for instance, you would probably be a 1H at home. But like Summerfield Day, when you send in your Cabrillo log, there is a line for club and put Fort Myers Amateur Radio Club. Spell it out. Don't just put FMARC because I'm sure there are other FMARCs. But if you put Fort Myers Amateur Radio Club, we are supposed to get some of the credit. John, are there specific forms to fill in or you just keep a manual log? Just keep a, uh, most people use the Cabrillo format and that's, that's what, uh, you know, which most any electronic logging program will do. They will accept paper logs. If you make a paper log, they will accept that. They're not happy about it <laughs> because, you know, they've got to go through that. But uh, if you've got some kind of an electronic log, logging software, uh, the what the club uses is N3 FJP, and uh, it's set up for winter field day. They've got a specific log program for winter field day. So you can download that and set it up on your computer. And uh, there's Ian right on the spot with it. And uh, I, I have a, I have a ham radio deluxe. And I think there's a a screen in there to okay. activate field night. Yeah, there's a log with HRD. Yep, what, I have so, that. So what you could do is know where you started and just highlight in your HRD log the stations that you worked as winter field day stations during that time period and export that as a Cabrillo log. It's not hard to do with HRD. Well, I'm looking forward to doing that. Unfortunately, I have to stay at home this year because of the virus. I have no I virus protection at this time. We don't want to get you out there and get you sick. We want to keep you around for a long time. Thank you for that. You're muted, Ian. It looks like I, you're talking, but you're Thank muted. you. That's my turn to be muted this time. I didn't want you guys to hear my squeaking chair for 12 minutes. Um, yeah, there it is. Squeak, squeak. Um, yeah, there's the, uh, I put it on the screen there for you. That's the software that you need right there if you want to do it that way. But uh, but I think, like you said, I think it take other ways. Um, I know the Crabiello, and I think they also, I, I'm not sure if they said they take paper logs. I'm surprised a number of contests that still take paper logs. It's very surprising because somebody has to sit there and put that stuff in the right. computer. I mean, it's just this way, you know, I don't know. Okay. Whatever. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, what's uh, any other questions on the reporting software? I just wanted to mention, we all went over to the swap shop park there and met underneath the, uh, the canopy with some folks and uh, we got our, uh, our internet uh, all set up. Did you want to talk about that? And they, you know, for the reporting software. Yeah, we everybody on the site out there will be using N3FJP. And, you know, we'll all have our individual computers, but they'll be working off a common server. So all the contacts that are made on site are going into one database. Uh, and... That way we know if we're duplicating somebody, some, someone else work, it'll show us uh, so we don't have a bunch of dupes. Uh, it also gives us that nice little screen that was in the, uh, in some of the slides of the, uh, the states all colored in and the Canadian provinces 
all colored in. Uh, that that central server gives us that and tells us where we what all sections we've worked. Uh, ARRL sections and uh, so that's kind of nice to be able to work off one common database. So if um, let's the next thing I want to talk about was we wanted to get more people involved in this. We've got the same general people that set up last year coming setting up their stations like they did last year. If I was a ham showing up that's never done this before and I showed up and I have four hours and I say, John, what, what can I do to help? What, what, is there something for that person to do when they get there? And what, and what would we do uh, with them? Well, we have had guest operators. I, I don't know, you might have seen in, in some of the pictures, we had uh, several guest operators that we had some pictures of. We had, uh, uh, there's one young man that was 10 years old and who's a general already in uh, some of the pictures operating. And uh, also his brother, uh, who's also a general who's I think Joe's 16, 17 now, and their sister who is uh, a tech. And uh, which since there are extra class operators in attendance, even those tech can, techs can get some HF time and, uh, and be on the air on the HF bands and get a little experience working HF. Because as we all know, that's a much different ang uh, animal than not. Uh, than doing two meter and, and 70 centimeter. Crap, here we go again. I think it's a great opportunity for people to, you know, for people to get involved. And I'd like to see more people coming out and hanging out and getting involved. Um, don't let the, the fact that you may not know how to use the software, or you may not know how to use someone else's radio or whatever. None of that matters. Well, that's, that's all easy to fix. And uh, I just don't want, I don't want it, 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 it was, it was uh, unnerving for me. So I just don't want anybody to be unnerved by that. Uh, just come out and it's just a fun thing. I made it to Summerfield Day and I was out there for a few hours and it was, it looked like a lot of fun. It was hot. Ugh, I'd rather have cold than hot, I think. Yeah, but, th uh, this is Leo KC1FLU. I mean, yeah, last year was Leo. my first year at Winter Field Day. And when I wasn't cooking, I was, you know, helping doing some logging on some of the stations while guys needed to do a bio break or something. And, you know, I've got my general class, so I was able to get up and transmit when the when the operator needed to, you know, go grab a sandwich or, you know, grab, you know, take a bio break or something like that. And I learned enough that I went home that night and downloaded the FL Digi stuff and loaded it onto my PC, hooked it up to my radio and started making contacts that night. So, so, you know, in a couple of hours, you can learn a whole new skill set just by watching and maybe doing a little bit of logging, typing in some keys on the keyboard, just paying attention around you. You'll pick up a whole new set of skills in just a really short amount of time. And it's a 24 hour event and people you can't talk for 24 hours. So there's going to be plenty of things to do, plenty of mics there we can put in your hand. So uh, definitely, uh, if you've never been to one, come by and try it out. This would be this should be a go. And like I said, I hope the weather is going to be good. I think it will be. And uh, I know a lot of the guys, there's going to be some, uh, uh, some of this um, solar panels. And I, I know we use generator power out there. Um, and I even, I've seen even some batteries being used out there. So it's nice about that. You know, something else, John, I noticed uh, your logging computers and, and your like cooking stuff and all that can be hooked up to uh, shore power. Uh, the only thing that can't be shore power is your communications equipment, your your uh, your radio, your your tuner, your amplifier, any of that kind of stuff. Obviously, could not be hooked up. So, I just thought that was an interesting divide there, um, that you can actually have your logging computer hooked up to regular shore power. If it's logging only, if okay. you're doing a digital mode using a computer, that computer also still has to run off the non-commercial power. I get it. You're right. But, but if you're only logging on that computer, uh, it can be plugged into shore power. And, and of course, cooking, they don't care about that. Uh, Leo does, doesn't have to run his crock pot off the generator. That's a good thing. Well, nothing eats up power like something that's heating. Um, 
All right. Anyway, I just want to mention quickly that we, we talked about the satellite contacts. Um, I also, uh, I noticed there was a bunch of, there's three or four different kinds of antennas out there. I noticed on the club trailer, they put a beam on there, right? What, what are we running with that? The club trailer has a 10, 15, and 20 beam on it. Uh, Tri-band beam. Uh, we do have uh, filters on that. We've got a triplexer. So actually different people can be working different bands on that antenna simultaneously. And, and we often do that at field day. As long as you're both talking in the same direction. <laughs> <laughs> well... You know, generally we point it, depending on time of day, either north and as it gets later in the day, ease it more toward the west. Right. Uh, because essentially what we're wanting is continental United States anyway. I mean, it's nice to have DX contacts. And every year we have had a few DX contacts. Uh and, and those are nice to have too, but generally we keep the beam pointed as at the continental United States. I noticed um, when I was looking at the setup on the, on the pictures, it seemed to me, because I'm dealing with this on my own property right now, it seemed to me like all those antennas were just too close to me. I, I mean, I guess some of them are low, low power or whatever, but, um, and then you mentioned that. So I, I was wondering, I guess, um, I think those pictures were from two years ago because I, or, 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 well, no, wait a minute, because Summerfield Day, you guys were spread out for COVID. But I think we'll be spread out a little more, which will help with the antennas too. Right. In the past two winter field days, we've all, all been congregated under one side of the pavilion. Uh, Summerfield Day and, and for this event, we're definitely using both ends so we can spread people out. Uh, and yeah, we're going to try to do some more antenna separation and, uh, that way everybody's a little happier and everybody gets a few more contacts and, uh, you know, we got plenty of room. It's just a matter of having uh, plenty of coax, uh, to use that space and, and spreading out, spreading us out a little more to use all that space. Because like I said, we have two football two whole football fields and a complete soccer field that that we can use to set up antennas. Hmm. And I just wanted to mention uh, contacts. You're, you don't have to contact someone that's necessarily in the same contest. Is that correct? I know they can't correct. be someone that's in our group, but they can right. be anyone, anyone else out there that's a ham radio that's not in the FMARC. They don't have to necessarily be in this contest, correct? Right. If it's Joe Schmo just tuning around the bands uh, looking for contacts, you just log him as a 1H because, you know, you can assume that he's operating from home. Right. And, uh, and even, you know, every year, like I said, we get some DX contacts and, and generally they're not out working winter field day because winter field day is pretty much a U.S. and Canada thing. Right. Now the... June field day, the ARRL field day, that is worldwide. There are people all over the globe working that, but uh, you know, winter field day being much newer hasn't caught on quite as much as that. But I hear it still opens up quite, quite, you know, right, right when it starts, it really does oh, open yeah. up. There's a lot of people oh, yeah. out there. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. All right, let's open it up. Uh, was there any other segments, John, that you wanted to talk about before we just open it up for general I questions? Think we, I, I think we've beat it pretty well. So uh, at this point, any questions? Yeah, John, this is KJ4 Whiskey Papa Baker. Yeah, Robert. Uh, is the club ID going to be W4LX? Correct. At, okay. On the site, we're, we're going to be using a club call sign, W4LX. Okay, thank you. Yeah, which is nice. I don't have to use mine, which is like alphabet soup. My, if I was in Scrabble and I spelled out my call letters, I would win. <laughs> anyway. You'd use all of them. I'd use all the letters up and we'd have to stop playing. All right. Uh, 
uh, who's next? Anybody have any general questions at all for, for John or anybody about uh, anything about Winterfield Day? John, one other question. This is KJ4 Whiskey Pop Victor. Do you have to have your own antenna to uh, participate in Winterfield Day? Uh, well, we bring the club trailer and generally a couple of three people work off it. Uh, or the, the Yantana trailer. Uh, we have a couple of antennas. Uh, one of our ops is bringing two antennas. He's bringing the antenna that he's going to work with primarily, and he's going to bring a second wire that we're going to put up uh, that somebody is welcome to use. Uh, we're bringing at least one of the club wire antennas and going to put it up. Uh, but yeah, several of us are bringing our own antennas. Uh, so I, I don't anticipate there being a deficit of antennas. Thank you. All right. And like I said, we can, uh, we, we won't need uh, more than we have the amount of radios that we have operating. So that's another thing too, that we're limited by the number of radios on the, you know, whatever our number is. So um, yeah. there should be, yeah, should be an, enough antennas hopefully that uh, we can get on all the different bands. Cause I want to get like on 160 and some of the crazier stuff, uh, six meters, maybe one contact. That's all we need. All right. Um, last call for questions on Winterfield day. Okay, I'd like to open it up uh, for uh, any other tech-related questions or anything anybody wants to get into tonight. Hopefully somebody has an answer. And now that we've moved into this segment, I want to start by telling everybody, thanks to, no, thanks to everybody. Nobody told me that you have to be on upper sideband on HF for digital. And so uh, I, I've been like twice, I've come on every, every, I go on all these nets and I say, you know, it's the weirdest thing. I, I go to these frequencies and there's like nobody there, but I go up just one megahertz and there's all kinds of people up there, but my computer can't decode them. And I finally figured it out. Everybody else's rig automatically goes to lower or higher, or, or, you know, the upper or lower sideband. I'm on manual mode, you know, being that I'm still banging rocks together up here. And, uh, and so I didn't realize that even 40 and 80 and 160 are upper sideband on digital. Thanks everybody for telling me. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's called experience. Oh, and by the yeah. way, the good news, the good news is my radio's not broke. So anyway, there you go. All right, uh, that open it up to you guys. Next, uh, next person uh, with uh, any anything, anything tech related at all. Let's talk about it. Oh, this is dying here. It's a good thing I'm not a comedian. <laughs> all right, is that everything? This will be the shortest it, net yet. Not the longest. Does, does, does anybody have any good plans for homemade little six meter dipole or uh, horizontally uh, uh, oriented antenna? For six meters? Yeah, just something real simple to stick. You, you can stick up. Hmm. I mean, I, I could make, I, I, I've, I've made two six meter antennas so far. I made one out of a pool cleaning pole. And uh, it works okay. I cut it in the middle so that the inside pole goes in and out either side. And that's how I tune it. And then I have a little set screw. That one works okay. Um, the band doesn't work though. That's the problem. There's, I mean, yeah, you gotta really be there when, sucking. you gotta be there when it opens up. I, yeah, I was just wondering know, if anybody had band, any. Man, I hear some great things about the magic band. So I'm, I'm waiting. Yeah. Yeah, my uh, my Gap uh, Challenger is supposed to work on six. It tests like it will work with a good SWR, but my rig doesn't like it at all. Mm. So uh, I was thinking about sticking a wire up or something in case uh, we start having openings. Okay, no problem. There's plenty of stuff on the on the internet. Yeah, it's funny. My wire does the 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 higher the frequency gets, of course, that long wire. It's harder and harder to get a good SWR. 
by the time I get up to uh, 50 megahertz on my long wire, uh, it's very difficult for me to get it to work at all. And I'm afraid I'm going to mess my radio up. So that's why I built me a pull clean and pull antenna. Uh, a six meter hey, wire would be hard to build. A do what? A six meter wire wouldn't be hard to build. And no, it sure it wouldn't take much wire. No, as a matter of fact, I made a 10 meter wire and used it for a while, but uh, I needed that aluminum to make a Yagi. I, I was on Amazon and I found eight gauge rolled up aluminum. Like, like you would see like copper wire for a house. It's like that, but there's no, okay. there's no uh, jacket on it. It's just bare aluminum wire and it's just rolled up in a spool and it's like 25 feet of it or 30 feet of it. And it's less than a dollar a foot. And, uh, thinking about buying me a roll of that because, um, one roll of that, I could build two or three Yagis with it. So and I saw a video on QRZ. The guy was built. I wish I could find that again. Uh, the guy was building. Uh, he was actually building uh, antennas out of arrows. Um, you know what I mean? Like a, like a archery arrow. And he was literally building uh, basically the same kind of Yagi that I'm building with these pipes. And he was building it with arrows. And I, I bet you it's already moved so far down. I won't be able to find it now. But uh, I, was, I was like, that's a good idea because arrows are a, a nice, clean piece of aluminum that's straight, that's, you know, that won't bend up on you. Um, and I looked, you can get like 12 of them for like 20 bucks or something. You have to watch out, though. A lot of them are carbon composite, and I don't think that's going to work. But... Yeah. Um, Oh man, I wish I could show you guys that. It was so cool because it was like they're, literally they're using an arrow uh, as the uh, you know as the um, element, the conducting element. So anyway, um, I'm I'm wanting to make that all the the seven element Yagi that all fits down inside itself, and I'm gonna make one. I'm gonna make that eventually and and, uh, and uh, show it to you guys. So uh, it'll be a, I want it to be a project so we can make some of those. All right. Um, anything else before we go? Is there anything else? I'm going to open it up. You guys are quiet tonight. Okay. It's an early night. I get to go have dinner. All right, guys. Well, it's it's been a pleasure. Um, is there any any announcements or anything else at all before we go? I want to announce that on Wednesday, the 27th, uh, Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, next week, in the middle of the week, I am the net controller for the Sunshine Net at 8.30 a.m. in Ponte Gorda. I am now an official fill-in net controller for the Sunshine Net. I love that net up there. For The, the cars have a great net up there. Um, and so uh, if you've never tried it, uh, give it a shot. I'll be the net controller this coming Wednesday. It starts at 8.30 in the morning. It's on the cars repeater, the WX4E repeater. And if you can't get the repeater, it's on Echolink. And uh, you can get it on there and uh, talk to us on Echolink instead of through the radio. All right. I guess that's about it. Last call. I'll make an announcement. Yes. Go ahead, Dave. Okay. In the morning, that's Saturday morning, 8 a.m. on 38, I know, uh, 3940, 3940 megahertz. If you've got a 75 meter antenna, it is the South uh, the uh, Aries net. And uh, we've got a lot of check-ins from Lee County, but we can always use more to check into that net. That's 3940 at 8 a.m. And you broke up a little bit. That's the South Florida Aries net. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. All yeah, right. it's the Southern Florida Aries net, HF. Okay. All right, I'm going to check that one out too because I'm all I'm I'm a net freak for That's some buddy. reason. I don't, I don't know why. Viejas Mountains, W6CC. All right, I guess that's about it, everybody. Oh, all right. So, Steve, when are we doing Winlink? <laughs> I had something all prepared to send out for Winlink, and it turned out that it uh, couldn't be used because it reports automatically to the uh, uh, U.S. Geological Survey, 
And I thought, nah, it's probably not a good idea that we'd be sending out stuff reporting to the survey as a part go. of an exercise. So I'm going to, I'm working on something else. I need to get that out tonight. All right. And I was, I was. Steve, uh, I heard you say something about WinLink and then suddenly I lost your audio. He said something about don't tell John. Yeah. Don't tell John. No, that's not what I said. How's this John? <laughs> Now we lost your audio because you're not audioing. AA4GS, turn on your audio. John, yeah, okay. Houston, over. <laughs> yeah, Ian, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. I can All hear right. you. And John, you're showing muted on this end. I could say something there, but I'm not going to touch that one. Um, <laughs> let me just repeat what I said. Uh, I had uh, a Windlink thing all put together using the uh, U.S. Geological Survey earthquake report. But uh, after putting a draft together, I discovered that if you submitted the report, it not only went to the ham radio operators that you addressed it to, but it also goes to the USGS. And I thought flooding them with a whole bunch of uh, uh, exercise things from uh, Southwest Florida is probably not the right thing to do. So I'm going to put something else together instead. And uh, we'll send it out a little later on tonight. Thanks That's for asking, cool. Ian. Yeah, well, I, and once I get uh, once I get Windlink going here in one respect or another, uh, I would like to do Windlink one night on the, on the TechNet. So oh, cool. I want to do a Windlink night. For sure. Let me know if you do that. I'll do your uh, co-host on that one. That would be perfect. That's what I was hoping. Um, yeah, I'd love to do that. And I'd like to go through the forms and, and everything else. And we can do it all right on the screen. I think it'd be great. All right, guys. Uh, is there a last call? All right, guys. It was Lunch Bunch was great this week. And uh, remember, there's the, the uh, no swap shop until next month. There's no swap shop this weekend or next weekend. It was supposed to be next weekend, but we're in winter field day. So other than that, I guess that's about it. Traffic net in the morning uh, on Saturdays eight, uh, at uh, 10 a.m. And the sunshine at 8.30. We'll see you guys later. I hope to Night. see or work you all at winter field day. Hey, you're back, John. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I, I don't either. It's Windows. Yeah. I, whatever happened, blame Bill Gates. There you go. There you go. All right, everybody. Have a good night out there. 73. 73, everyone.